Assalamu alaikum. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. First of all, I am very thankful to Dr. Taf Kima Sa for uh, advising me to give a presentation. Uh, I am consultant physician at Social Security Hospital. Uh, with the permission of with the permission of Taf Kima Sa, I just had a comment for Dr. Sa. Uh, there is hell of a difference between scabies and monkeypox. Scabies is, as you know, as you know very well, better than me. It is one of the commonest skin condition encountered by GPs. Okay, the layers of scabies are basically burrows, not classical pustules. Okay, common things are common. Burrows they are commonly encountered in interdigital clefts and genitalia. And furthermore, the layers are very itchy. Monkeypox, the layers are not like that. Especially okay? at night. Yes. And the itching is classically at night. Okay, one difference. Secondly, you asked about herpes zoster. As Dr. Sap is an infectious disease specialist, herpes zoster, again, the lions are totally different. It is just like comparing um, um, elephant with ant. Uh, the herpes zoster, please, sir, please, Dr. Sap. In the lions in herpes zoster are basically dermatomal in distribution, majority of the time. Okay, and the most common dermatomal distribution are trunk. Okay, truncal lions or ophthalmic deviant of trigeminal nerve. Here the lions are widespread. On all, they don't basically comply with dermatome. The lions are widespread in monkeypox usually. They are not classical dermatomal in this. They the yes, obviously. Oh, no, they are no. In herpes zoster, usually the, the monkeypox. They are always, always. They, they are vascular. Or they, are they, they can, they, they can, they can, they are vascular, and then after that, they can after super added, yes, super added bacterial infection, which we have asked, they can occur, but afterwards, afterwards, as usually the case, okay, as usually the case, usually the case in viral infections, okay, and then you asked about herpes simplex. Um, herpes simplex usually encountered in patients with high grade fever and the lions are classically usually encountered lips perioral any successful condition yeah, yes it is can but usually it is associated with viral high grade fever okay right. now coming on to the topic um, vitamin d as the sponsor is basically i think the the drug is advit d colecalciferol yes uh, in pakistan Hypovitaminosis D is very very common. Okay, how would you suspect a case of hypovitaminosis D? Any patient presenting to you with the complaints of muscle aches, muscle weakness, or muscle cramps, plus bone pain, you must almost always suspect uh, vitamin D deficiency. It is very very common. It said that uh, after the age of 35 years in females. 80% of the females are affected with hypovitaminosis D. Okay, that might be caused might be lack of sunlight uh, or uh, dietary in the, in a, inadequate dietary intake. Furthermore, there are various diseases which are associated with hypovitaminosis D, like for example chronic renal failure. Okay, then chronic liver disease, and then uh, various rheumatological conditions like rheumatoid arthritis. Then if the child, if a child develops hypovitaminosis D, he would develop rickets. And if an adult develops hypovitaminosis D, then in long term, a patient would develop osteomalacia. Okay, so vitamin D deficiency suspicion is very, very important. And there is no uh, classical specific symptoms. Non-specific symptoms are, is the rule in case of hypovitaminosis D. Okay. Basically, what is uh, vitamin D? Vitamin D is basically a fat soluble vitamin. Okay, it is absorbed basically with the help of fat. A, a D, E, and K, they are basically fat soluble vitamins. It is is synthesized in the body after exposure to sunlight. And UV rays are very, very important for this. Um, it is not that if you uh, take sunlight in the morning or after in the evening, you would get UV rays. UV rays are very, very important in specific time. And it is biologically inactive. So the basically calcium absorption and vitamin D, they are interrelated. Vitamin D, what is the action of vitamin D? It, it's very simple. It would help in absorption of calcium from the intestine. Okay, so calcium metabolism, for calcium metabolism, vitamin D is the most important vitamin. There is no other vitamin under the sun which would help in absorption of calcium from the intestine. And if there is deficiency of vitamin D, 
as I have just mentioned symptoms and then there is decreased calcium in the body then bones would be demineralized and then various then, then there is a cascade of events leading to osteomalacia in the long run. As I've just mentioned that it helps in basically the normal differentiation of cells and then furthermore immunity. It helps in the formation of, in enhancing immunity. Um, in COVID era, there are anecdotal reports that apart from antiviral therapy, the uh, addition of vitamin D would help. But uh, again, it is an evidence-based era. Okay, if there is no evidence, then I think the medicine should not be given. It is not antiviral, but it is a good supportive treatment. You see, as it enhances the immunity. And that is why it has also been shown uh, that hypovitaminosis G is present in various autoimmune diseases. What are autoimmune diseases? Autoimmune diseases are those diseases in which the body itself produces antibodies against the body's own organs. Okay? Like, for example, SLE, rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma. The various antibodies are produced in the body against the body's own organs. So all the autoimmune diseases in which the bones are involved or joints are involved, vitamin D deficiency must be suspected. And I have just mentioned, enumerate various symptoms uh, in which you must do uh, vitamin D. And furthermore, again, I, have, I would stress that this is an evidence-based era. Please, please don't start vitamin D straight away. First of all, get the levels. And if, if the levels are Please. If the levels are decreased, then start and get the levels from uh, that lab on which you rely. Get it from most authentic lab under the sun. The labs we see, various labs are just like waste paper baskets. Can you name someone? No, uh, I would not name, but Shokat Khan. No, uh, I am not, um, I am not Shokat, getting Shokat Khan name from some lab. Shokat Khanam is the most reliable in my practice. Yes, but uh, again, but again there is a problem. If you take on a general perspective, for example, blood sugar, if you delay, if the lab delays the in, uh, uh, interpretation of blood sugar, then blood sugar can be erratic. So that lab, get the test from that lab which would do straight away. Sugar, I'm talking about sugar, not vitamin D level. Furthermore, Aga Khan, you have mentioned, I think it's also good. Sir, again, I have done a study I would share with you. Uh, glucometers are not very much reliable. I'm not talking about all. I would advise, please, after some time, after a few months, advise the patient to get the uh, blood sugar from glucometer and at the same time from a good lab and then compare. This is very, very important because, uh, Dr. Sam, please just allow me, I would not run away. Uh, why? Why I am saying that? Because it can be dangerous for the patient. And if the levels are different, there is sky high difference, then either the lab is wrong or glucometer is at fault. And I have seen a lot of patients having this problem. So this is basically to compare this glu your glucometer and if the glucometer readings are nearly uh, matching then it's okay. The, you can ignore lab and advise the patient. Furthermore, if the patient's blood sugar is normal, there is no need of pricking because uh, pulp space infection is very common in uncontrolled diabetics and controlled diabetics as well. Then this can spread to Palmer, uh, uh, Palmer, Palmer space as well. Palmer has four things that depends upon the quality. ये तो चाइना के कुछ आए हुए हैं। I agree. अगर अच्छी कंपनी है, दो तीन अच्छी कंपनी है। अच्छी कुछ है। या कल दूर जो है, दो तीन वो अच्छी कंपनी का। अगर उनको मीटर स्टिक्स जो है। To your question or comment. First of all, in, in a person who is not a known diabetic, never ever rely on, it is not advisable. Please show me any guidelines, sir. Uh, I would uh, ask your attention, please. If a person is not a known diabetic, always, almost, if you are suspecting diabetes, get the venous blood sugar level, not the capillary blood sugar level. Show me a guideline. All the guidelines advise venous blood sugar, mind you, venous blood sugar fasting and two hours postprandial. 
and hemoglobin A1C if you have just uh, said. But again, hemoglobin A1C, how, how it would it tell about yes. the recent? It show it only shows three months control. Three months. Three and 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 if the if the blood sugar fasting and two hours after meal are abnormal twice. Then you would suspect and label because it is a lifetime diagnosis. So it cannot be a patient cannot be labeled just by glucometer. So I have just mentioned about the calcium balance that with, with calcium, PTH level, and phosphorus they are interrelated with vitamin D. Again, it's said that uh, a few studies have shown that hypovitaminosis D is associated with cardiac diseases as well. Okay. I have just mentioned that it is a fat soluble vitamin so it is excreted in bile and then metabolized to water soluble metabolites and then excreted in urine. And uh, sources in America and other European countries developed food fortified and here as well now fortified foods are available, dairy products they contain uh, supply of good supply of vitamin D and then the excellent, excellent supply I have just mentioned that UV rays the sun they are very very important but sunscreen um, dermatologists are very they are basically very fond of advising sunscreen that uh, basically is a risk factor also in as a for a case of hypervitaminosis D then altitude uh, clouds and then sunscreen I've just mentioned risk factors I've just in the past just mentioned that obesity fat, malabsorption syndrome, breastfed infants, high, higher melanin content and the elderly. Uh, I've just again I would stress that 80% uh, of the females after 35 years they have in Pakistan have hypovitaminosis. You can google it. And then it's not that only females. In males, again in males after 40, hypovitaminosis D is very very common. I would repeat any patient coming with non-specific symptoms of muscle weakness, muscle pain, muscle cramps associated or not associated with bone pains, you must almost always suspect vitamin D and please get the vitamin D levels from an authentic lab. Then there is genetic susceptibility, susceptibility also but it's very very rare. Again, uh, there, are, there, is a, there are a lot of studies now that vitamin D deficiency was evident with among individuals with high blood pressure. Okay, and I have just mentioned um, a few minutes back that 62% uh, higher risk of cardiovascular events in participants with low levels of vitamin D compared to those with higher levels. Okay, but uh, common things are common. What are the persons having ischemic heart disease? Most common diabetes mellitus, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, smokers, okay, they are more common. If you, uh, if you are saying, if you say that in an exam, and Dr. Sabha is not here now, he is going to appear in FCPS, that most common cause of the ischemic heart disease is hypovibinotis D, then she would, the person would definitely fail, okay. This is a talk, uh, any, any vitamin, there can be deficiency or there can be hypervitaminosis also. So hypervitaminosis D is also um, can be present if a person is taking very high dose, okay, as just mentioned, 40,000 international unit per day for one to four months old and 50,000 international per day for adults for several months. So it is not, it should not be given like this. 50,000 in the case if a patient is deficient, then 50,000 after 15 days would suffice. Okay, or they have got two lakh units, I think so. Again, I would say that it should be given after one month. And follow-up tests are very, very important. Okay, why a blood test is advised? It's just mentioned on the slide that what is the basically recommendation for adults? 200 to 400 international units per day is advisable. Okay.